Good morning. This RMN Adventures episode is a little bit different. It's a long story, but I'm going to try and make it as brief as possible. A while ago, we did a story with Kudu Meir from the African Banglan Working Group, where we tracked a Banglan named Ali. In between that, we started a relationship with the Ironman 4x4 Africa and the African Banglan Working Group. So what Ironman 4x4 Africa did is they are trying to help out the African Pangolin Working Group with some vehicle accessories and just stuff to make their life easier. So we were about to uh, go out to Louis Trichard today and go fetch Kudu Meyer's Land Rover to just give it a bit of love, suspension and some accessories. But what happened was he had a friend that brought, to, brought the Land Rover down. So the Land Rover is safely at Ironman 4x4 Africa. But Kudu told me that he's going to be changing a tracking device on Ali. The, the pangolin we tracked the last time. Now what happened with Ali is she became pregnant in the wild and that is a huge step. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing conservation feat because she was rescued from the trade and she became pregnant in the wild. So it's kind of full circle. And he's gonna be changing the device tonight and I am not passing up this opportunity to go and visit him and tracking tonight. So I've also got two friends joining me, Jock and Mila. If you remember Jock from the Kalahari Boys weekend episode, check the link in the description below. Mila is an awesome friend of ours and she's going to be joining us. And also look out for Kudu Meyer's Land Rover video where we're going to be uh, sprucing up his, uh, his landy. So we're on our way. We've got about five to six hours to drive. We've got, only got one night. It's a, it's a far distance, but it is so worth it because Ali has a pup, so hopefully we get to see a pangolin baby. I am super excited. If we don't see a pangolin, I'm just super excited to get out in the bush. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so today we are finding two pangolins. One we released uh, recently, her name is Equaleni. Um, and the other one you've seen her before, or you've met her before, um, is a pangolin called Ali. Um, so she's been released for just over a year, um, where she already had two pups. Her initial pup she had um, when we released her, the second about four months ago. Um, so Ali has been with us for a while. We're just gonna... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we're gonna change Ali's tag um, for research purposes, and also just check up on Equilini, just making sure, um, since it's quite recently since she's been released, we're just gonna make sure that she's okay and doing well. Um, all the pangolins I work with um, are actually um, confiscated from the illegal wildlife trade. Um, Ali is one of them. Um, she was confiscated when she was pregnant and it was quite a stressful case as pangolins do lose their pups quite often when in care or in captivity. Um, so uh, Ali went through veterinary treatment um, and through a whole release process and we were lucky that um, we could get her back into the wild um, where she could actually give birth to the pup where he was wild and free. Um, we monitored for her uh, for, for during that time. The pup grew up healthy and separated from its mom, um, and which was a very big success story. And to top that off, um, a, a few months ago, uh, we saw Ali again with a brand new pup. Um, so even though, the, even though we have released um, pregnant pangolins in the past, and there has been successful births, Ali is the first case of a pangolin coming from the trade where the second pup or that birth uh, or that integration at least with the wild population has been successfully documented. Um, so it's just a, 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 just not a, a feel-good story, but a, a good, big success for research and conservation. So uh, Equaleni is a other female pangolin, um, she's also been recently released. Um, she actually, there was a release attempt on her on one reserve, but um, the conditions was a, was a bit too harsh. Um, she was an extremely, extremely stressed pangolin um, that we do receive. Um, just a reminder that all the pangolins that I deal with do come from the illegal wildlife trade. So sometimes we get them where they've been weeks without food or water, 
or where they've actually been physically abused by people, their captors. Um, so Ikulini was one of those. She was not happy with people, she was extremely stressed, and those are very difficult cases to release. Her first re release attempt did not go well, um, and we sent her to a rehab center close by, um, a rehab center called uh, Umoya Kulula, and they did a fantastic job in just getting her condition back on track and, where, and just monitoring her feeding behavior, where uh, afterwards knowing this new information and just getting her condition up a bit, we attempted a second release. The second release attempt was a flipping great success. I'm very proud of her. Um, she's doing well. Um, during the 10 days she's been out, she's already picked up four to 500 gram, uh, uh, grams in weight, which is very good news. Um, when we've seen her, her feeding behavior was fantastic. Um, so tonight we're just going to go up and check up on her again and just see what she's doing. Yeah, so we just got signal for the pangolin called Equaleni. I'm going to go quick, quickly do a visual check up on her. Um, uh, 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 and we're going to use the opportunity to also just download the data from, from her tag. So I can look at her all her f more finer scale movement um, uh, 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 since her release. And this is the same data that I'm currently using for my research. Um, this is... Uh, we are in the bushveld now. There is buffalo in this area. Um, they are quite, they're not really aggressive or things, so they will probably avoid us. So we're gonna be loud when we're moving. We're gonna be talking while we're moving, just showing the animals our, our presence. Um, we shouldn't be moving too far, um, but yeah, safety comes first. So on any reason for us to head back, if we feel unsafe or we, we think it's not worth the risk, we'll just head back to the vehicle. Okay, um, so ons gaan maar, ons gaan move. Um, ons kijk of ons daar beter point of end. Kom ons kap het sommer net die zoek hier. Wat ek doen met die is, ek stel die altijd my reception swakker en swakker en swakker. So dat my, so dat ek net op die sterkste punte kan sign optel. En dit forceer jou dan nader in die richting van. Shop, shop. Today, since I've started to today, there's official um, release protocols that do get followed now. And each release, we do learn more about releasing these animals. Um, so yes, we do make a difference for these individual animals and we are learning a lot more and our work is being used in other countries and by other researchers. And that's very exciting. Um, but unfortunately, pangolins um, are still a very high-valued animal in the wildlife trade. Um, we don't like sharing these numbers um, as it just creates more incentive. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, pangolins are today still recognized as the world's most illegal, Ill, illegally uh, traded mammal, um, where they're targeted for their, their scales mainly, but also for their meat and other things like blood and stuff as well. Um, so unfortunately, we're still um, in a heavy battle with the illegal wildlife trade. So my work focuses on taking pangolins that's been confiscated from the illegal wildlife trade and releasing them back into the wild. So when I started, um, I was actually the first person to uh, actively monitor pangolins that's been confiscated from the wildlife trade, released and then monitored for long term. Um, the first challenge that we face, it's not easy track tracking these animals. Um, they do damage the tracking equipment, they do move vast, dis vast distances, and there's very little known about their behavior. So following them on a longer term and collecting research data was extremely difficult. Um, but since then, I mean, it's all been almost four or five years for my personal involvement, we know a lot more now, not just with releasing the animals, but also just um, what to expect from them, what distances they can move, um, uh, what they do during certain times of the year, but we're still building on that. So even though I would like to say that we know a lot more, <laughs> um, I, I, I try to avoid that and saying we just know a bit more and that's, um, that's all just building on each other and we're still in a position where we're just learning a lot. And that's a big thing um, to remember with pangolins. There is very few experts. There might be a, a few uh, specialists, um, but we're far from anybody calling themselves experts on this species that, because um, we still have much to learn about their ecology, their social behavior, their breeding behavior, um, their habitat use um, th uh, throughout different environments um, and just everything. So we're still just learning. Kreo, so it's ya. It's ya. Come on, Sian. Come on, okay? Come, Sian. Come on. Come on, Sober. 
Oh, mooi. Okay, yeah. she called up now. You'll see it's wet there. The dog just pressed his nose against her there. He helps me find her in dense conditions like this. Um, it's just always good to have extra eyes and ears. And like you saw now, instead of looking around through all these bushes, the dog instantly sniffs her out. We can collect our data and we can get, get out. So, um, always helps. Let like a store this. If she's walking in our direction, just stand dead still. Um, sometimes I do and come and investigate. Uh, you can see actually now, if you look there, she's actually grooming in between her scales and she's on her back. Um, now she's opening up again. Um, so it's actually, I don't think she's called up because of us. Um, she it looks like she was resting here. Um, so you can feel it's quite a hot and humid temperature still this time of the afternoon. Um, so a lot of the times, especially with the younger pangolins, they come out and the heat catches them a bit and they'll go under a bush or next to a tree like this. Um, they lie on their back and they will urinate on themselves to cool themselves down and they'll just rest a bit. And you can see now with things cooling down, she's uncurling, she's grooming her scales there um, and she's gonna start moving again soon. Yeah, so what I'm currently doing here is just downloading the, the data from the, the one UHF tag there. That's the tag with the two antennas. Um, so again, yeah, this is this is this would give me all the information um, of her movement uh, since her release. Um, so we try and do this uh, on every opportunity that we do sight her, um, just to uh, how can I say uh, utilize the sighting and just make it as productive as possible. Um, and since these tags can actually break off or get damaged, um, it's always a good idea to download the information as, as much as possible. The last light of the day, we just got a visual of the pangolin um, female Ikuleni. Um, she's looking good. Um, it looks like she was out in the bit of the heat of the day <laughs> as we found her resting. Um, typical pangolin behavior, resting on her back. Um, they open up their tail, lie on their back. They'll urinate a bit on themselves to wet themselves and then they cool down. Um, so yeah, she was relaxing, was good to see her. Used the opportunity to download data from her tag. That's what it looks like. Um, so yeah, we left her. She's on a mission now. She's gonna feed through the night and we're quickly gonna head to, towards Ali now and see if we can get a visual on her. So Ali, um, we've, like I said, we've monitored her for, for over a year. Um, she's got a, quite a, um, a stable uh, movement and habitat zone. Um, she's still close to the area where she was initially released, even though throughout time she has moved off this area and she moves back to it. Like I said, there's seasonal movement. Um, so she's still in her own habitat. Um, She's still uh, with the pup to our knowledge. It's been a while since we've, we've, we've had recordings on trail cameras or sightings with her with the pup. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll see if the pup is still with her. Uh, so she's still in her own habitat, or still her, her, her own territory. Um, she's coming out a bit earlier in the evenings now. So we're hoping to get a visual and a sighting tonight. Um, and then we'll use that opportunity to just change um, the, the tracking tag on her for, um, that we use for research purposes. Cool. Her tail, you see on your left hand side, um, and you see the scales are much more rounded from all the years of weathering, and it's facing to your right. And you'll see the scales on the right hand side is much more sharp and smaller, and it's facing towards your left. And you see they're making those fine points. And so that's normally how you also spot a young pangolin. Those points aren't weathered off yet. So the bad news first is she was still in her burrow, so we didn't have opportunity to change that tag. 
Um, but luckily, um, we've, we've got Neil doing the monitoring. I'm leaving the tag and equipment with him. So the next time he gets a visual, he'll use the opportunity to change the tag. Otherwise, to ask me to come and assist him with that. Um, but the good news is, though, that we did um, get a good visual of her in a burrow. She's in a termite mound with several openings. So we could get a, a visual by peeking inside and uh, we could confirm that the pup is with her and that the pup is growing nicely and is uh, nice, nice and fat and healthy. It's not just us as conservationists' job to protect the species, but it's a, a responsibility that falls on everybody. You know, it's a species that belongs to everybody in South Africa and everybody in the world. It's a species that's disappearing. Um, so not just for, for, for general awareness, but just general responsibility. Like, just get involved. Um, and for those who can, um, please, uh, if people are willing to donate from money to equipment, anything, um, the organization that I work with is African Pangolin Working Group, but we are definitely not the only organization that needs support. And pangolins are also not only the only species that needs support. There's a lot of wonderful people doing a wonderful work out there. Um, but I do urge people, if you do the effort to get involved in organizations or individuals that's doing this type of work, do your research and make sure that you give your support or even funding um, to the great people.